Big Boss Blossom. Tell me how you came up with that. Um, as an artist name, I really didn't come up with it as an artist name. It was a name that I had since I was probably like a freshman in high school, like the Blossom part. It was a name that I had since I was in high school, and it really came from me trying to think of a cool Facebook name. <laughs> and it, it was two of my friends, and we were the Powerpuff Girls. I was Blossom. We had a buttercup. We had a bubble. Now, at first, I think I was Angelica Pickles, and then somebody else was Susie. Mm-hmm. So it was like basically looking for something that had three people. Of course, I ended up being the last standing, so I kept my name, and... I don't know. It was already kind of like an artist name. Mm-hmm. And then like Instagram, my name was that on Instagram for about. Right now. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Risha, and I'm here with Big Boss Blossom. What's good? What's up? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, your name. Oh, my gosh. Big, Blo- Big Boss Blossom. Tell me how you came up with that. Um, As an artist name, I really didn't come up with it as an artist name. It was a name that I had since I was probably, like, a freshman in high school. Like, the Blossom part. It was a name that I had since I was in high school, and it really came from me trying to think of a cool Facebook name. <laughs> and it, it was two of my friends, and we were the Powerpuff Girls. I was Blossom. We had a buttercup. We had a bubble. Now, at first, I think I was Angelica Pickles, and then somebody else was Susie. Mm-hmm. So it was like basically looking for something that had three people. Of course, I ended up being the last standing, so I kept my name. And I don't know. It was already kind of like an artist name. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Instagram, my name was that on Instagram for about seven years, too. I just kept my name. I wow. liked it. And it was not nobody in the industry with that name. Right. So, does it have anything to do with your pink hair? Uh, I mean, pink was definitely, like, always my favorite color. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like an obsession. Like... If I'm at a store, and it'd be something that I don't, like, because I'm not fond of just buying things for no purpose, mm-hmm. but if it's pink, it's going to tempt me to buy it. Like, <laughs> I think I brought a, a big Adidas duffel bag. I wasn't even working out, but it was just pink, and I wanted it. So if it's pink, I'm going to get it. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, just being in the industry, you've been doing this for a long time. So what are some things that you picked up along the way? Well, yeah, I've been around a lot of people in the mix, and I just pay attention to the way that they move, the way that they handle things, the type of people that they keep in their circle on their team. Mm. And I think the main things I learned, I learned that a lot of people that are doing great in life, they like to keep positive energy. They actually like people that that speak highly of them around them. Mm-hmm. And I mean, some people might think like that's arrogant, but it's like, it's energy. It's probably keeping them going. Some people think like, oh, they're this person that they don't stress and they're not worried. No, a lot of people be ready to quit every single day, but Mm -hmm. they keep good vibes and good energy and people that motivate them around them at all times. And if they are not like that, they don't keep them around. Definitely. And then like people, teams, I notice like you got to purse, they have to be... Everybody have to know their role, they have to play it right, and they have to wait their turn. Mm -hmm. Because everybody can't go up at the same exact time. One person have to, you know, lead the way, open the path so somebody else can come up. That's hard for people to do. Have you ever thought about giving up? And if so, when, when when was that time? And taking through, like, you know, your thought process and what made you keep on going? Um, of course. I think every upcoming artist thinks about giving up because it's you gotta in the beginning you gotta put out a lot and not really receive much. Right. And you're going to receive a lot of negative. You're gonna receive a lot of why are you doing that? Or you ain't getting paid, or you ain't gonna be this, or you ain't gonna be the next her. Like you get a lot of negative and you get a lot of doubt. Right. So you gotta be a very strong minded person, like uh, me and my homeboy, we say it's, uh, you got to have false hope. 
You got to mm-hmm. in order to stay going. You got to believe in yourself more than anybody will. But some people aren't strong enough to endure that a lot of people going to doubt them. Right. So they be ready to give up. But I feel like when I be, when I used to think about giving up, it was just probably like when life was getting hard. It never had anything to do with music. I always mm-hmm. loved music, so that'll never stop. It's just when you got so many other things going on in life and then you trying to push a career that you're really not getting too much out of right. in the beginning, it becomes like, uh, it's easier for me to let this go than something in my real life that you can't avoid. Right, right. So um, just let me know, what is the main thing that you're focused on like you know, it, at this time in your career? Uh, I'm really still focusing on uh, gaining a younger fan base. That's mm-hmm. what I want. Like, I feel like they'll love me. That's good. And I, I, I feel like I cater to them. I talk a lot of stuff. And I try to empower women. But I like to make my music to where guys like to hear it, too. Mm-hmm. You know, some girls, their music be so... It be so sexist that, like, a guy can't really listen to it. Mm-hmm. But I try to make my music for where both people going to listen to it, they going to like it, mm-hmm. and they going to want to repeat some lines. Definitely. So who is a, um, a female artist at this moment that you feel like emulates that, that you admire? Um... Let me think. That emulates that? I don't feel like I can really compare myself to nobody. I feel like I have my own sound, my own way of movement. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people throw the Megan Thee Stallion thing. And she be talking her shit, though. She do. Mm -hmm. But I just don't feel like... And I feel like maybe our body type maybe might give that energy. But I don't feel like... Like, I wouldn't say, like, yeah, that's who I'm... Well, yeah, yeah. well, just um, for example, for me, like I like um, Young and May. Uh, mm-hmm. I was talking about the other day, like I was um, I was telling um, my friend that um, women are not being noticed until they talk about sex. They mm-hmm. don't get, and it's a man dominated, it's a male dominated industry, mm-hmm. and women, unfortunately, when they're talented, they just get like they get deals in here and there, but their career don't go all the way up to like the top. Unless they're talking about sex, which is crazy, because it's just like you got rappers like Young and May, you got rappers like Tierra Whack, like you got Missy Elliott, and it's like they just get lost in the sauce, hard ass like hard bars, you know, like, mm-hmm. and it, it's just like so. What are you like as a rapper that don't fixate on you know sex when it comes to rapping? How are you like bypassing you know that stigma? I mean, I really I don't think. I do. I mean, I can't help who I am. Like, <laughs> my music is me. Yeah. So, it's like, I wasn't always a girly girl that got dressed for makeup. Like, I'm from a small city. I'm from Buffalo. Mm-hmm. We don't really wear makeup unless it's, like, a birthday, a good event. Like, you know, we got our two and few girls that like makeup. But right. But that's not a thing. Like, getting dressed up and dressed. Like, that's not something we do all the time. We get mm-hmm. dressed down. We get fly with some sneakers on. <laughs> like, most of the time, our faces is natural. Like, so the girly stuff was not always a thing. It's something that kind of grew on me as I moved around in different states. Right. But, um, like, my music is me. I can't really change it. And I do, like... I feel like I definitely had to add certain, you know, sexuality, sex appeal. So, so I'd be talking, like, about some gangster shit and then bust <laughs> out and might say some shit that's going to catch you off guard. But it's like, you got to add it because you still got to get the people what they want. For some mm-hmm. reason, that's what they want. And you got to talk what you, like, you got to talk what's in your heart, too. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You got to just always, you know, like, not even be afraid to, like, even if, even if it's, like, a sexualized industry, you know, you're not afraid to sit there and, you know you know say what you want you right. know yeah so i don't know like i do got i got some explicit music but my it's whole not your catalog whole yeah it's not like no you're gonna get a bunch of different stuff you might be in love you might be on some fuck nigga shit you might be on some twerk turn up shit you might be on some sex fall in love shit but that's not like my main focus because i just feel like that's really supposed to be for Yo, people. Right. At home, for real. 
So tell me, what producer, like, you know, you, I know you make music, you're in the studio all the time. What producer do you feel like you work with that you have, like, amazing um, music chemistry with? Um, my people, his name is uh, Young Zo. Mm -hmm. He's, like, a super producer. He's an artist, engineer. So he does so much, and we work close together that... Like, you know, he kind of, he knows me, you know how I am, yeah, you know yeah. what I like, and he lit at what he do, so I don't have no complaints mm -hmm. about what he do, so I would say him. Definitely. So, okay, so when you're in the studio, are you like a writer, or do you prefer to like freestyle when you hear the beat? Okay, then... <laughs> so I like, I gotta write. Okay. I write everything though. Like I write my to do list. I write things just because I think I'm gonna forget if I don't write it. So I write everything. But I've been like I've been in the studio with a lot of well known artists, and I noticed that a new thing is the punch ins. Mm -hmm. Like I was actually in the studio when uh, Lil Keith had recorded a mm -hmm. track, and he punched in everything. Mm -hmm. And it be sounding crazy when it be being said, but the song be good. So I have tried it. I've done it. And I mean, I feel like it be good. It definitely makes it a different sound because it's off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. But me just being so much of trying to be a perfectionist, I prefer writing. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, I know you got a whole bunch of stuff coming up. But before we get into that, I like to play my favorite game called Plead the Fifth. Okay. So, Plead the Fifth, if you guys don't know, you're going to know now, is five unorthodox questions I get to ask the artist, the superstar, so you can get to know her more. So, you ready? But if I get too personal, you can always say Plead the Fifth. I'll move on. No questions asked. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Question number one. What is a time, um, give me a time where um, you just stopped in the middle of sex and and be like it was like this ain't working <laughs> i gotta go <laughs> and what happened um let me think i would probably say like it was like it was just it was something like it was like some pineapples <laughs> pineapple it was like some pineapple stuff like that it was just like uh like i was talking to somebody from a different country. I'm not going to say what country. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bash them, <laughs> but it was like some like I don't know. I don't want to say it. It was like some, some weird pineapple shit. It was some it was some stuff that I was just like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I got to go. So, I don't know. It kind of turned me completely off. Okay. Okay. Question number 2. What is Big Boss Blossom's biggest turnoffs? My biggest turnoff is somebody that is too full of their self to the point where they see nobody else. And that's just always been a turnoff. Like, I hate a guy that's so cocky. They don't even see. Like, I feel like the female is the prize. The female, we have to take hours to get dressed. We have to put so much into what we look like. Right. You're supposed to be obsessed with me like <laughs> not be so obsessed with yourself that I can't get two words in right like so that's a main one like just being so obsessed with yourself that you don't even see anybody else um and just disloyal like disloyalty I, I I don't really like I feel like I'm a good person I'm a very loyal person I fuck with who fuck with me the long way so once you show me that I'm not receiving that in return. It's like I kind of got to run. Mm -hmm. I got to go like tomorrow, like yesterday. So, and then liars. Like, if you lie too much, like, I think I was a little green when I was younger because I used to <laughs> believe everything people said because I didn't see the purpose of lying. Should I want lying? Right. If I didn't have it, I ain't have it. I wasn't about to run around acting like I did, but it was some people. Like, I remember when I was like five, a girl told me she had a pony and I believed it. <laughs> Girl, yeah, when I got older, I'm like, this girl was lying. <laughs> she had a pony, but people would just lie about dumb shit to the point where, like, if I catch you lying, it's over. It's like, uh, I don't believe nothing else that come out your mouth. What's the point of us even having conversation? Mm -hmm. I feel that. I feel that. Question number three 
what was the worst restaurant experience you've ever had and what happened and where was it you put them on blast <laughs> a restaurant experience let me think um uh, i'm trying to think well i went to a place i don't want to i'm gonna put them on blast but I, i'm sorry <laughs> it was uh kale's kitchen mm-hmm. and it was in it was the one in college park there's two of them it's one downtown that ain't never steered me wrong mm-hmm. but it was one in college park and like i love their food so <laughs> it was some people from my hometown i brought them there i'm like you ain't gonna go wrong here it's so good and we ordered the food and it was cold we ordered it and stayed in the diner waiting for it and when they brought it to us it was cold like you touched the greens and it was cold and i was just like did they have pre-made like did they forget to put it in the microwave like it kind of it told that it wasn't fresh it Damn. told on them that they don't that they don't cook it fruit fresh. Yeah. but downtown i know they cook it fresh because they make us wait an hour <laughs> every meal so i don't know okay okay question number four what was the most memorable experience you had with your mother um with my mother memorable Ooh. I would probably just have to say like graduating <laughs> okay like and I would just say that because I was like I was a lit kid <laughs> a lot of people didn't expect me to graduate like on time because I was into a lot of the wrong things I was into a lot of street stuff like gang stuff I used to go to jail I used to get formal from school like I was actually formal my senior year but I was a smart criminal. Like I used to, Most of them are. Yeah, I made sure like I had passed all of my classes my junior year. So by senior year, it was no way they weren't going to let me graduate. Right. Because it was just classes that I had to pass. So graduating was like, it was good because a lot of people didn't expect it. Like people like kind of thought that I was like a freshman and when I was a senior. And I'm like, yeah, no, I was skipping study halls. Yeah, I was skipping important classes. Not me. <laughs> Wow, okay, okay. Question number five. What is something that you do not like? I'm talking about insects or, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, what is it, uh, camping? Like, what is, what is something you absolutely hate? Like, I don't want to do it at all. <laughs> okay, so when I was younger, I, like, I love, I always liked it working with, like teens and at risk kids because I was one of those kids everybody mm-hmm. expected not to be great and right. I feel like I can't I'm, I'm great so I always be trying to work with them and give them that hope and I seen like something for like a camping job and I was like oh camping and then I went <laughs> to the interview and like the interview was like on a little golf buggy outside and I seen that the tents were really outside <laughs> and then I seen that like it was like a bug. Like, I literally tried to jump out of the cabin. Whatever we were driving, and I'm like, oh, my God, get it. It was like a big, humongous bug. And I was thinking in my head, like, yeah, they're not calling me. <laughs> they like, you know, this ain't going to work for you. I hate bugs. It's something about the z that messes with my ears. I hate bugs. I hate rodents. Um, I don't know. I just hate being real dirty, like mm-hmm. mud. And stuff like that, stuff that gets you super dirty, it mm. kind of like annoys me. Like clean, you know, cool yeah. areas. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Like animals, I don't really care for animals. Mm. I don't hate them. I would be open to dealing with them, but I don't trust them and I won't get too close. I feel that. <laughs> But it was definitely a pleasure talking with you, chatting it up with me. Please let us know what you got coming up for all your fans. Okay, so I have a single that I'm dropping in a few days, actually. It's called Real Life. Mm -hmm. Uh, The song is, like I said, it was just something. It's me. It's, like, really, like, real stuff. Like, it's real life. Mm -hmm. Like, it's basically about a lot of people portraying to be something on the internet or just period portraying to be something that they're not Mm -hmm. and it's just like no everything I portray to be everything I act like everything I do is like what I really am like Mm -hmm. I don't really 
like I said, I didn't even Wait, understand it. Pause it. Is that a bug? Move your foot. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Again, let us know what you have coming up for your fans. Okay, so yeah, so I have a song called, a single called Real Life. Mm -hmm. And I'm dropping it in a couple of days. I already shot the video to it, so all of that is going to drop on the same day. And it's basically just about just being true to yourself, like being what you are in real life. Like, if you're a... Excuse me? Huh? Ha <laughs> ha. But yeah, so that's coming out. It's like fun for the girls. It's like an anthem. I feel like it's an anthem for boys and girls. Okay. Definitely. Basically being about what you say you about and, and what you appear to be. It's fun. Definitely. I definitely can't wait for that. And please let us know where we can find you and find a lot of information about you. Like your websites and stuff like that. Okay, so my name is Big Boss Blossom on all platforms. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, I think it has like an underscore. Somebody stole my name. <laughs> Matter of fact, nobody stole it. I stole it and had to make a new TikTok. <laughs> and I had to add an underscore. So yeah, Big Boss Blossom on, I think, Facebook, everything. Emails, Big Boss Blossom at iCloud.com. So yeah, pretty much. Definitely. Well, it's definitely been a pleasure. You guys know it's your girl Zarisha, and I'll see you till next time. Okay. It's like 21 minutes.